Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mr. Cash. I hope everybody is doing well. And we are going to continue in the chapter about aerosol uh, drug therapy, which is chapter 30 on, on the Egan Fundamental of Respiratory Care. And we will continue where we left off. This is part two. So we left off over here, aerosol drug delivery system. Now we are going to go over the delivery systems. Every This is the way I used to study. You can study however you want to study, but this is what I'm showing you. This is how I studied during my two year program of respiratory care. It takes a lot of time, effort, and uh, but there's no other way. There might be other way of studying. I don't know. This is the only way I knew, and this is the most effective for me is it took a lot of time to read the chapter and understand everything. And when you understand everything, no matter what questions they throw at you at the test, you're going to know the whole concept. You're going to know everything. It doesn't matter what question from any direction they come to you. You are going to know what's the answer. So let's get to it. Aerosol drug, uh, drug delivery system. One more thing to point out. Forgive me if I do any mistake during this video if i do a mistake please put it in the comment below and forgive me so effective aerosol therapy requires a device that quickly delivers sufficient drug to the desired site of action with minimal waste and at a low cost so this first sentence they're telling you in, in order for us to deliver an aerosol therapy that is most effective, that is the patient is going to benefit from, we have to have a delivery system that is going to go to the desired site of action, wherever we want it to go to. You either want it to go to the upper airways or the lower airways. So aerosol generators in use include PMDIs, which is pressurized uh, meter dose inhalers so this is one of them so let's got our little paper here and we can put the first one which is P M D I's which is pressurized meter dose inhalers this is the first thing that they give us in this paragraph so let's keep on going with or without spacers so with or without with or without spacers so you can have a spacer for this for the mdi which is an inhaler so the inhaler so let's let's go to the second page they have a video right here so this is what they're talking about this is the mdi right here this is an mdi right so you either can use it use it with a space with a spacer or without a spacer however i've used it in the hospital and it's most effective with spacers a spacer is let me see if they have a spacer here there you go these are spacers here this is a spacer here where you put the the the, the, the mdi that you see right over here you you put it into here and then the patient's mouth goes here and then they depress it and then it goes into here and accumulates here and then the patient inhale from here. So you can use an MDI with a spacer or without a spacer. Okay. VHC uh, without space. Okay. Aerosol generated mdis where with spaces or vhc dpis dpis these are dry powder inhalers so it is so a dry powder inhaler so we can go here and put dry powder inhaler two things about two different things that are here dry powder inhaler this is not it is not a um it's not an aerosol or humidifier. It's just dry powder that, that is the that, that medication. So it doesn't go into any categories when we were talking about this here. When we were talking about aerosol, aerosol or humidity. 
So aerosol is visible. So MDI can go under here, under aerosol, MDI, right? Meter dose inhaler. But DPI, dry powder inhaler, cannot go into this category right here because you, it's not aerosol. It's just dry powder. That's all it is. Okay. Now let's keep going. Small and large volume jet nebulizers, hand bulb atomizers, including nasal spray pumps, ultrasonic nebulizers, and vibrating mesh VVM nebulizers, as well as numerous engaging techniques. So first, let's, we're gonna go through pressurized meter dose inhalers. The pressurized meter dose inhaler is the most commonly prescribed method of aerosol, you see? This is what I was just talking about. They said the method of aerosol delivered in the United States, which is true. It is very common in hospitals. In the United States, the pressurized medical inhaler is probably compact. This is 48. Compact. Okay, this just goes here. Compact and easy to use and provides multi-dose convenience. So it is easy to use. So we can put we go back. So we can go most common prescribed. So we could put the most. commonly prescribed method of aerosol delivery system okay you get another point where we said it's easy to use and provides multi-dose convenience that means it gives a lot of doses in it so easy to use okay easy to use all right now let's see what else we can we can get about a meter dose inhaler a uniform dose of drug is dispensed within a fraction of a second after acutation is, is reprodu reproducible throughout the canister life. Uh, pressure uh, the, the MDI and acutator are designed for the specific drug formulation and dose volume to be delivered. The MDI is used to administer bronchodilators and take anticholinergics and steroids. So now you can add to your note. You can add to your note. Go down here and you can put uh, administers used to administer used to give Bronco dilators. This is one, two, anti cholinergics, and three, steroids. Okay, now put your note here. Let's continue. More formulation of these drugs are available for use by MDIs than for use with nebulizers, okay. More formulation of these drugs are available for use by, okay, we're up to here. When probably used, MDIs are at least as effective as other nebulizers for drug delivery. For these reasons, MDIs often are the preferred method for delivering bronchodilators or to spontaneously breathing patients 
who are intubated and undergoing mechanical ventilation. So, the sentence is very important. MDIs is preferred. So it says here, for this reason, often preferred. What type now? They're gonna tell you what type of patients you should give MDIs to. So it is preferred for spontaneously breathing patients. Spontaneously breathing patients like me and you right now. We are spontaneously breathing. So we're not using any medical device, right? So we can give it to spontaneously. Breathing patients. <clears throat> And breathing patients and patients who are intubated, and also patients who basically you can say patients who are in intubated patients. So they have to be on a mechanical ventilator. Okay, intubated patients. Okay, cool. Now. Although MDIs have relatively, relatively easy to use design, patients commonly misuse them during therapy. Most MDIs are press and breathe. You press and you breathe, you inhale. But there is increased presence of vibration known as breath acutated P MDIs. The basic components of MDIs are similar regardless of the type, manufacturer, or active ingredient. Commonly used MDIs are shown in figure 39 to 6. These are the MDIs that are used, 39 to 6. This is the first one I pointed out earlier, and this is also a second one. Examples of, examples of commonly used MDIs, albuterol inhalers, asminx twist inhalers, cortisy hemra, they can stock were produced. These right here, all these types, they all do the same thing. And at the, the end of the day, they're all MDIs, meter dose inhalers. Okay, let's continue. The MDI appears to be a simple device. It looks like it's a simple device, but it presents sophisticated technology in engineering. A pressure, med an MDI is pressurized canister that contains the prescribed drug so it has pressure kind of like if you have a if you have a perfume that has pressure in it or not a perfume i'll give you another example like uh, what is a pressurized those uh what is it they sell them at the dollar store most of the time uh fresheners air fresheners that are pressurized the air freshener when you pre press it, so this MDI is the same thing, but it's, it, it, it is sophisticated design because you have, remember, I have doses in it. So it has to give you just every time you press it, one dose or two doses. It is pressurized canister that contains the prescribed drug. Microbized powder or aqueous solution. It is a volatile propellant compound with a surfactant and dispensing agent. When the canister is inverted, nasal down, the, and placed in its accurator or boot, the volatile suspension fills a metering chamber that controls the amount of drug delivered. I was just saying that. Pressing down on the canister aligns a hole in the meter valve with the meeting chamber. The high probabilent vapor pressure quickly forces the meter dose out through this hole and through the accurator nozzle. So they're describing this one here right now. So this is right here, this is the canister. And actually in the hospital, you can see it here. This is the canister. You can pull it out. This is when you give it, especially through a, 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 a ventilator, you will not use this here, this chamber, this extra chamber you will take out the canister from here and then you will squeeze it into the vent circuit, the closed vent circuit. So this is the canister and this is the accurator they're talking about. Accutator is this here. This is the accutator. And then 
meter valve this is the valve right here and this is the drug that is inside the actuator seat this is connects to this chamber this blue chamber actuator nozzle this is where the drug comes out from this is where the patient's mouth is gonna be there's gonna be a tight seal right over here and then he's gonna squeeze or shing and inhale at the same time so like i said you can actually take it out and it's easy simple you just pull it out and then when you give it to a vent circuit okay to a patient who's intubated so let's continue aerosol production takes approximately 20 seconds as the liquid suspension is forced out of the uh, mdi it forms a pump within which the Poplin's vaporizer initially the velocity of this pump is high approximately 15 seconds however within one second the plump velocity decreased to less than half its maximum as the plump moves away from the actuator nozzle at the same time vibrator causes the initial large particles generated at the actuator orifice to decrease rapidly in size so they're all just right here describing what's going on during every time you press they just explain to you this type of stuff the output volume of the medical range is from 30 to 100 MCU, approximately 60 to 80% by weight of this spray consists of the pollutant with only approximately one. Here they're describing the, the size of the particle that comes out of here. Okay. So 39, 50, let's go here. Okay. Color fluorocarbon, CFC, MDI used in standard acutator loss of drug in the valve stem housing and on the acutator mouthpiece amounts in 10% to 15 over. Okay, I'm just going to read you what's important and what, what, what do you need to know. You don't need to know that much about, you know, uh, about it. It's simple. You know how to how, how to use it and how to administer it to, to the patient and you know that it's a, it's an aerosol delivery system. That's the most important that you need to know. And it's commonly used to patients who are spontaneously breathing and patients on who's intubated on a ventilator. And remember, a spontaneously breathing person is like me right now. I am spontaneously breathing right now. From their inspection in the mid-1950s to begin of the 21st century, such CFCs such as Freon were the pollutants used in propellants used in MDIs. Manufacture of the CFs, the most application has now been because of the effect of these components on global warming with a period of transition provided. Even should be primary. Okay, anyway, this you could read it, but I'm not interested in it because it's not going to give me this paragraph. It's just more information. I just want what's important. Okay, now let's move on to this paragraph here. New pressurized meter dose inhalers technologies, Aerospan. The Aerospan Media Pharmaceuticals, some recent in New Jersey, was de developed to deliver fun solids. Okay, anyway, same thing. This is here. They're, they're, they're actually telling us about improvements of this meter inhaled dose of breathing. Inhale uh, is brief, okay, which incorporates a trigger that is activated during inhalation. The trigger directly reduces the, the need for the patient or caregiver to con okay, actually with inhalation dilution of the efficiency of breath activated children are younger than six years limited and their use should be restricted to older children and adults. Or for initial deposition of steroids using these devices is still very high. No breath activators. Tempo inhaler, a new generation of, okay, again, like I said, this is all information that is interesting to read, but if you don't have the time, you don't have to waste your time on this. Okay, this is the new pressurized meter inhale doser that I hear they got it. Same concept again, it has a valve, it has an actuator right here that is holding it in and it's inside the chamber. Okay, rule of thumb. An MDI has a press and breathe design. A breath acutated MDI incorporated a trigger that is activated with inspection. Before initial use, after storage, every MDI should be pr primed by shaking and acutating the device to atmosphere one to four times depending on, on the label. This is important here. This is how you prime it, right? So how are you gonna instruct your patient to use it? 
first you have to prime it, right? And this is how you prime it. Okay, let's add this to the note. Must be primed. So I'm gonna add here. Need to prime before use by shaking and actuating device to atmosphere one to four times okay so what they mean here is before you use it before you use the mdi you need to prime it which means you're going to shake it well you're going to open it open this cap and spray at least one to four times to the atmosphere to the air before you actually use it on the patient you're going to four times at least one to four times i normally do it twice just twice because i don't want to waste the medication that is in there and then you give it to the patient and when you squeeze to the patient the best that i've seen in hospitals is you inhale slowly and deeply when you inhale it because it's an aeros uh, uh, aerosolized medication if it's the meter dose inhaler if it, i'm sorry if it's the dry powder inhaler you will have them inhale fast and deep so you're gonna inhale fast and deep inhale fast and deep this is slow and deep because it's aerolized this one is you want it faster so the powder can go all the way deep as fast as possible okay all right so now We've done this, we've gone over this, we have gone over this, and what we are up to, we finished here, and we finished here, 50, 51 now. Now, again, we're still in this, those encounters, a series limitations is the lack of encounter to indicate the number of doses remaining in the canister. Factory effect and pressurized meter dose inhaler, bring the temperatures. So this is all, this is right here. It is all still toxin, toxin, talks about the MDI. It's interesting to read, but I'm not gonna go over it because it's, it's gonna be a lot of time to, uh, to get the benefit of it. And I'm actually trying to upload more videos so that can be helpful to people. I'm not going to spend too much time on the meter dose inhaler. It's very simple. This is the main things that you need to know. And let's keep going. Technique. This is successful administration of drug. Okay. This is important here. This is on chapter 852. You can read this. This is technique. This is how to use it. The successful administration of an aerosol drug by MDI is highly technique dependent. Two thirds of patients and half of care professionals who teach MDIs do not perform procedure properly. So they're telling you in this paragraph that most of patients don't know how to use the MDI the proper way. Also, the healthcare administrators, any healthcare respiratory therapists, and other healthcare professionals, such as doctors and nurses, they don't know how, which is you, it's not common. A lot of people do know how to use it. But this is what they're saying here. Anyway, I recommended. there are recommended ways in how to use it. I recommend that you read it and try to understand it. And this is page 852. It is a few simple instructions that you do. And uh, this is the way to use it. And right here, this whole paragraph is basically summarized in this box here, which is box 39.1. So again, let's read this. Optimized technique for use of pressurized meter dose inhaler, right? Warm, 
warm the MDI canister to hand on body temperature and shake it vigorously. We said that, so you want to shake it. I don't know why they say warm it with your hands to body temperature, unless it was cold. You want it to be at least to be warm. Vigorously shake it. Before first you use of a new MDI, when the MDI has not been used several days, prime, remember that word that I put here is very important. You have to prime it, okay? By pointing it into the air, you point it outside to the air, not to the patient, away from the people, and acutate a couple of times. Acutate a couple of times, it means press it a couple of times. Assemble the apparatus and uncap the mouthpiece, ensuring there are no loose objects in the device. So you take it off, you make sure that it's ready. Open mouth technique. Open your mouth wide, you open your mouth wide, keep tongue down, your tongue must be down, hold the MDI with the canister oriented downward and then the outlet aimed at your mouth, you know, you position it to your mouth, position the MDI approximately four centimeters, two fingers, which is about two fingers so away from your mouth. Okay, cool. Now you close your mouth technique, place mouthpiece between lips with tongue down out of path of the outflow. So your tongue, the patient's tongue must be down where there's no flow, okay? Breathe out normal. So you breathe in out, breathe out normal. <sighs> you breathe out. As you slowly begin to breathe in, as soon as you're gonna start breathing in, acutate MDI, you press the MDI. Continue inspiration to total lung capacity. And then you have to insp inspire to total lung capacity. You have to keep in. Remember, slow and deep, slow and deep. The MDI, you breathe slow and deep. This is the most effective way to give this uh, the, uh, medication. Hold your breath for about 10 seconds, then relax and breathe normally. You, and this is very important too, I left that one out. So when you breathe slow and deep, but you also hold it for about 10 seconds at the end, at the end of inhalation, okay? So you exhale, then you inhale. Hold it, hold it, hold, 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 hold your breath, hold your breath, then you let it out, okay? So with one minute between puffs, just and recap the mouthpiece, okay? And that's the end. So this is very important. I like these instructions, which is in box 39 to one. This is very important to, 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 to read and understand, okay? Again, this here, this paragraph, and this one here, same thing, they give you techniques and stuff like that. It's just more information. Accessory device versus, okay, so, so this is here, they're gonna go in, down into to, to spaces, spacers. So the spacers are chambers, holding chambers for this um, medication, okay? And you can read about the spacers. It is more, so I, I've seen people benefit from spacers. They, they, some people like it, some people don't. Okay, type of accessory devices, okay. This, this, this is it. And uh, I think that will be enough for today about the MDIs. Today was all about the MDI. I wish I had one. A lot of people, you might have family who have asthma. They might be using some MDIs. You can check it out and see how it looks like. But if you go to clinical to the hospitals, you will see them all over the place. A lot of people use them, okay? As a matter of fact, during COVID, MDIs are used all the time instead of the uh, small volume nebulizers. We have not covered the small volume nebulizers here, but it's very simple. It's in the ch ch chapter. Hopefully I will cover it in the next, uh, next video that I will be making soon. Hopefully I'll be making videos every week because I have been very busy. So please forgive me for that, but I will try my best to try to make more videos. Thank you so much for watching. Forgive me if I made a mistake. If you have any questions, any comments, put them down in the comments below. Subscribe, do whatever you gotta do, share the video. If this can help anybody, please do share with them. And thank you very much for watching.